What's up, phasers? Today, we're gonna talk about the scale and shape of the Earth and how that influences the technology that we build. For example, the International Space Station is orbiting about 340 kilometers above the Earth's surface. That's more than 38 Mount Everests stacked on top of each other. From that height, you might think that the crew of the ISS, well, they must be able to see a ton of the Earth's surface, right? In fact, they only see about 3% of the surface at any given time. So why is that? Well, let's explore. Welcome back to Phase Out, a science and engineering show brought to you by Blyly Technologies. Once again, I am your host, Sean Fedorko, and today we'll think of the Earth as an apple. If you shrunk the Earth to the size of an apple, how far would the ISS be from it? Maybe this far? How about this far? Nope. It would only be about this far. 2.7 millimeters from Apple Earth's surface. This is why, although they have humanity's greatest balcony, they see only a small fraction of the surface. All right, looking back at Apple Earth, how far away do you think you would need to be to see a full hemisphere or half of the Earth? Well, there's an elegant and simple equation for this. The fraction of the hemisphere obscured equals R over R plus H, where R is the Earth's radius and H is the height above the Earth. So let's say you're standing on the moon. Would that be far enough away? Well, the Earth's radius is about 6,400 kilometers, and the distance to the moon is about 384,000 kilometers. We can do the math. 6,400 divided by 6,400 plus 384,000 equals about 0 0.016, meaning 1.6% of the hemisphere would still be obscured. This has a lot of implications for communication satellites. How do you maximize coverage while still being close enough to maintain a signal? Not to mention accounting for the Earth's rotation. Well, there are several kinds of satellites classified by their orbits, how far they are. Geostationary satellites, or geosatellites, they're placed into an orbit 36,000 kilometers above the surface and they orbit as fast as the Earth rotates in one day. This gives geosatellites the ability to stay in a fixed position, one particular location relative to the surface of the Earth. And it makes geosats perfect for telecommunications by connecting two or more points, towers, that are thousands of miles apart on the Earth. Smaller satellites, like CubeSats, are newer and they're referred to as Low Earth Orbit, or LEO satellites. These satellites are placed in orbits about 24,000 kilometers above the ground. The orbits for these satellites, because they're small, are choreographed like a dance. They travel in different directions around the Earth while all communicating with each other. Satellite communications are designed to cover, well, precise zones, anywhere from a single country to an entire continent. Now using geosats and leosats and small sats, it's possible to have a high speed internet with access to everywhere in the world. Soon everywhere from deserts and isolated island communities to ships at sea and planes in flight will have access to the same high speed internet. Blyly is playing a big part in this quest to connect the world. Their newest innovations in communications on the move, or COTM, and frequency control technology will enable a new age of connected communication, bringing us closer to creating a truly global internet that is universally available. Now there's a lot to explore in science and engineering surrounding RF communication and satellites and technology and the internet, so make sure to connect with this show by subscribing and commenting below. Well, until next time, I am Sean Fedorko, and thank you for phasing out with us.